Hello everybody and welcome to another game news roundup. Today's we're going over multiple gaming news instead of just focused on one main thing. Um, and this is being live streamed twitch.tv slash trunkswd. I stream usually Mondays and Wednesdays evenings, uh, usually between 6 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard or day daytime. I mean, actually it actually is daytime right now, isn't it? Because now it's clocks did change like a month ago or nearly a month ago. Um, so yeah, if you want to check me out live, twitch.tv slash trunkswd. And as always, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment down below if you have anything to add. And yeah, we've got about half a dozen or so news articles, news things to go over, and one bit of sales, which probably the main reason you clicked on this, because that's the thumbnail of the video. The PlayStation 5, according to the latest VG Charts estimates for February 20. 23 has outsold the Nintendo 64, has moved up the ranks in the video game platform lifetime sales. So yeah, the PS5, we have about 33.5 million units sold as of February 2023, which is above Nintendo 64's just under 33 million units sold lifetime. And up next for the PS5 is the Sega Genesis, which is 34.06 million units sold lifetime. And then we got the uh, Super Nintendo at 49.1 million, and then the Xbox One at 51.26 million. Um, at this point, at the time of recording this being April, the PS5 would have at some point in March outsold the Sega Genesis, but once we get those estimates up, uh, we're wait we like to wait. We're now waiting on more data to come in before we report on our estimates, which is why we post like a whole month's worth of estimates at once, because um, there's more data available, means a little bit more, the initial estimates are more accurate. But yeah, the PS5 at some point in March definitely have, will have outsold the Sega Genesis, or known as the Mega Drive in other parts of the world. Where I am, I, when I grew up, it was the Genesis. And, you know, it's known as the Mega Drive, at least in the UK, maybe other parts of Europe. I'm not totally sure where it was known as the Genesis or the Mega Drive, other than the UK was Mega Drive, US was Genesis, as much as I know off the top of my head. Um, and if you're wondering, yes, by the end of the year, the PS5, considering how high the sales have been, if demand is as high as we're looking, if stock remains really high, PS5 should be crossing well over 50 million, has a chance to outsell the Xbox One by the end of this year. So to pass, it's only past the N64. Genesis sometime in March. Um, and towards the end of the year, the SNES and Xbox One, potentially like in December, sometime in December, to pass those two consoles. Um, and breaking down the sales of the PS5 by region, we got about 14 million sold in North America, 10 million in Europe, uh, just under 3 million in Japan, and 6 million in the rest of the world. This compares to the N64, which the majority of its sales came in North America with 20 million, versus 6.3 million in Europe and 5.5 million in Japan, and less than 1 million in the rest of the world. So those other markets, which used to be smaller, are becoming a bigger are becoming, they're growing as gaming markets. Gaming is getting more popular and uh, I guess it's more affordable and more available, readily available in those other countries. Uh, there's a sl slim soon, right? Might finally be able to pick up a standard one. We'll see. Uh, Dave, you should be able to find a PS5 somewhat easily now. I mean, before it was pretty much impossible unless you got really lucky. Uh, but it's been readily available with the PS5. I mean, not as available as say the Switch is or even say the Xbox Series S. And for some reason, the Series X stock has dropped like a rock. I don't know. Is, is maybe Microsoft is redesigning it or something? I really don't know what's going on with that. But Series X stock um, has been absolutely awful this year. And even really, really bad in March. Um, but anyways, yeah. Breaking down PS5 sales in Europe. Our estimates have about 2.5 million in the UK. 1.6 million in Germany. And just a hair under 1.5 million in France. And Sony did announce they had shipped 32.1 million PS5s. As of December 31st, 2022, with about 30 million sell through, uh, according to Sony. This is the difference between sold and shipped. It can take several weeks or even over a month to ship consoles worldwide, depending on where they're being shipped. You know, whether it's by train or you go across the oceans, and by the time it gets to the ports and then gets on the trains from the ports to where they're going, and it can take a while, depending on where you're talking about. Um, so there was a gap of about like 2 million between sell through and shipped. And I wouldn't be surprised if the gap between sell through and shipped is going to be even higher at the end of March. Um, just because it's Sony shipping so many more consoles that there's just more in transit. So the gap might even be upwards of 3 million potentially. Um, but we'll see what Sony announces when they release their earnings report. Uh, either end of April or beginning of May. I don't think they've announced the date yet of when they're going to announce their earnings report. Um, so yeah. The PlayStation 5 has moved up the charts. 
has outsold the Nintendo 64, and in March will be outselling the Sega Genesis. And if we go to our breakdown here, we got the PS2 as the best-selling gaming console of all time. We don't have exact figures from Sony for the PS2. They announced more than 155 million shipped lifetime, but that was like a year before it was discontinued, and for a while there, they were, they were combining PS2 and PS3 hardware sales as one, so then at some point they announced PS3 sales, so then you have to subtract this and that, and then you kind of got a range of like 158.7 million to like 160, 161 million. So we just went with the lower number, the definitely lower end of that, to potentially a bit higher, but we don't know for sure. Um, and Nintendo does release the actual shipment figures, all their systems. We do know that from all of them. Um, so yeah, we've got the, where is it? 17th place, PS5, and we'll be passing the Genesis move into 16th place, and then by the end of the year, should have no problem passing the SNES as long as stock remains available, and a good chance to outsell the Xbox One. And then sometime next year, you know, it'll keep moving up. We'll see how high it goes. I don't actually expect it to, to catch the Switch, which is obviously still selling, um, but it's sh hard to say. It should at least get into sixth place, I would say. I would say it's gonna sell the PS1 in the Wii. Uh, will it catch up to the PS4's 117 million? We will see. Um, if it doesn't, it'll be close. I'm expecting, like, uh, I don't know, 110, 125 million for PS5 lifetime. Um, if anyone's curious, also, the Series X and S, we actually had it pa just passing the Master System in February. And soon enough, um, in the coming months, we'll be outselling the GameCube and the Xbox. I do expect the Series X and S to outsell the Xbox One lifetime, but not to catch the 360's 85 million units sold lifetime. So I'm expecting somewhere in the middle, so probably somewhere between the NES and 3DS. Would be, my, would be my predictions. But anyways, so yeah, PS5 has outsold the N64 as I went on a tangent. You know how I go sometimes. Anyways, moving on. Uh, the U.S. Justice Department has sued Activision Blizzard for suppressing esports wages, which um, Activision Blizzard has already settled it. This was from today. The U.S. Justice Department sued Activision Blizzard today, and Activision Blizzard um, yeah, agreed to a settlement today. That's how quick it was. So, so yeah, the civil lawsuit filed by the U.S. Justice Department claims Activision Blizzard and two of its esports leagues implemented a so-called competitive balance tax that uh, that effectively operated as a salary cap that penalized teams in the Overwatch and Call of Duty leagues. So they're like, yeah, this is not good. So they sued him. And Activision Blizzard, according to a report from Reuters, has already settled. And Activision Blizzard, in a solemn statement, said Activision Blizzard Esports is committed to being a leader in the esports industry and creating opportunities for players to earn fair pay and benefits after they've been under potentially underpaying them with a salary cap for a while. Uh, when we launched the Overwatch and Call of Duty leagues, we wanted to create a viable career opportunities for the players requiring minimum salaries and mandatory benefits as part of player contracts. As a league, we also wanted our products to be competitive. So we carefully designed and implemented the competitive balance tax. We have always believed and still believe that the competitive balance tax was lawful and it did not have... Yeah, if you believe it was lawful, why would you have settled out of... Settled already? Hmm? Anyways. And it did not have any adverse impact on player salaries, they claim. The tax was never levied. And the league's voluntary, voluntarily dropped it from our rules in 2021. Remain committed to a player ecosystem with fair pay and health care. And continue to have the least restrictive player mobility competition system across all major sports leagues. Uh, when they say all major sports leagues, I, do they mean just esports? Or are they referring to baseball? Football. American football. Basketball. Hockey. Golf. NASCAR. Other sports. Just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um, anyway, so yeah, they've already settled out of court. Or in court, I should say. Out of court? In court? I don't know. Wait, anyway, they've reached a settlement already, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and if you have a PlayStation 5, the Play PlayStation Sony has added accessibility tags to the PlayStation Store for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 games, but only on, PS5, on the PS5. Um, the accessibility tags let developers provide details on the accessibility features supporting their games. There are over 50 tags in six categories, visual, audio, subtitle, and caption, control, gameplay, and online communications. Um, so yeah, from the PlayStation blog post, accessibility tags will be available for PS5 and PS4 games on PS Store on PS5. Um, 
And you can compare accessibility text for each um, through a drop-down menu comparing the PS5 and PS4 versions of the game to see what's available. Um, yeah, with the tags, you'll be able to easily see if the game you want to play features accessibility options you're looking for. Which is nice. I think any more accessibility features are always a good thing in gaming to make gaming more accessible to more players. More gamers, more people out there. Which I think is always a plus and a good thing to do. No matter who's doing it, any... Like, I know Microsoft with the Xbox and play, Sony with the PlayStation, they have their own accessibility type controllers. I forget the exact names of them. But they have a controller specifically designed for uh, disabled people to make gaming easier, more accessible for them, which is a win-win, I think. So, um, so uh, moving on to other news, Saudi Arabia is investing $38 billion. Uh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's not as big as Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition, but that is bigger than any gaming acquisition out there, other than that one, by quite a bit. Uh, yeah, they're investing $38 billion to become a hub for the video game industry, which is not a big surprise as they've been investing money in gaming companies for several years now, billions of dollars, um, including Nintendo. They're the biggest, I think, third-party stakeholder in Nintendo, which we'll get into that in a moment. Um, so yeah, Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, PIF, a wealth fund shared by Crown Prince, um, is investing $38 billion to become a hub for the video game industry. Um, and Savvy Gaming Group, a subsidiary of Saudi Arabia's public fund, um, CEO said, We are now more of an esports company than a games company. What we're doing this year is focusing more on publishing and development. Uh, we would like to use those investments to begin to work with these companies and ask how... We can work together on publishing in the Middle East and North Africa, run their esports businesses, or develop new IP together. Part of our mandate is to help partners and other companies come to Saudi and, choo and choose um, them over some other places to establish a publishing business or distribu distribution business to serve the region. Excuse me there. Um, so yeah, Savvy is... I'm not, I might be mispronouncing it. It could be Savvy. I'm not totally sure. Um, is looking to build up its resources and clout in the video game development and publishing. Uh, this includes their own game studios, which has about 45 million, uh, 45 million, geez, 45 employees, and is currently developing a mobile game as the first title, and then their second game will be a console game, and they hope it will grow into a top-tier studio, but does admit uh, building a game studio from scratch is super hard. Um, Ward, um, uh, CEO from Savvy Gaming Group, um, said one way to become a global entertainment hub by 2030 is to acquire a studios or publishers, including internationally. He does admit EA Electronic Arts is too big for them, as he currently has around $13 billion to invest in acquiring a game publisher. So $13 billion specifically for one game publisher. Uh, that does, that would, I would assume also eliminate like Take Two as well. Obviously, Activision Blizzard is already off the board. EA is obviously, they said, is too big for them. Uh, Ubisoft might be, that might be enough to acquire, say, Ubisoft or Embracer, maybe. Of course, though, Ubisoft, someone, I forget who it was, did try to do a hostile takeover of Ubisoft, but they were able to stop it. And Ubisoft hasn't really shown any signs of interest of wanting to sell, so I don't know who they'd be interested. Um, but they have shown more interest in Japanese companies, so they invested in Nintendo. They, in they have an 8.26% stake in Nintendo. Not, are they going to acquire Nintendo? No, of course not. That's no way. If they can't afford EA, there's no way they could afford Nintendo. Who's worth way more than EA is. Um, but they've also... Um, oh, they also own $2.9 billion of stock in Activision Blizzard. Um, $1.7 billion of stock in EA. And $1.2 billion of stock in Take-Two. As well as owning stock in Tencent, Embracer, Capcom, and Nexon. I don't know. Maybe Bandai Namco or Capcom create who they go after. But it depends. Hopefully they don't attempt a hostile takeover. Whoever they're willing to acquire is hopefully a company that's willing to sell. And it's not going to be a hostile takeover. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know there's controversy stuff with Saudi Arabia and their government things they've done. But that's not a place. This is not a place to get into it. I'm just reporting on the news. They're looking to invest potentially $38 billion. And of that $38 billion, $13 billion, up to $13 billion will be um, used to invest in acquiring a game publisher. Potentially. Potentially. All right, so Nintendo and DNA, Dina, um, they did announce a partnership recently, uh, but they've now announced a new joint venture company called Nintendo Systems, and the official website is now live. 
So yeah, Nintendo Systems has 5 billion yen in capital. Um, and the company is described as a development operation of systems related to the digital part of Nintendo's business. Um, as well as planning, development, and operation of new services. Boy, that music a little bit. Um, so yeah, Nintendo Systems was born in April 2023. It's now April 2023 right now. Led by a team of engineers from Nintendo and Dina? D-E-N-A? Uh, to create to create a system that makes it easy to deliver Nintendo entertainment to consumers. Uh, this is, this is uh, Google Translate from their official website, as I don't read or speak Japanese. Uh, while there are many technological innovations in the world, while valuing the spirit of originality and flexibility, members with various strengths and strengths actively discuss aiming for great results that cannot be achieved by one person's sincerity and system development is working on. The technology surrounding the internet is changing at a dizzying pace day by day and is becoming more complex. Under these circumstances, Nintendo systems will leverage the relationship of trust between the two companies, which has been cultivated through a partnership of more than seven years and used to Nintendo's originality um, and DNA's um, knowledge of technology as the driving force to create new innovations for the world. Technological developments surrounding entertainment are expected to continue to develop from obsolete technology to cutting edge technology will continue to take on the challenge of bringing smiles to as many customers as possible through Nintendo Entertainment. Sounds like they're working on, let's say we go to some of these, one of the art, one of the comments here. So this gen, this venture isn't so much to develop games as it is to bolster Nintendo's technological infrastructure, which yeah. Nintendo's, if you know anything about Nintendo's online services, it ain't good. I mean, the Switch is a vast improvement over what they had before the Switch, but compared to uh, the PlayStation Network or Xbox Live, it, it is lacking a lot of functions compared to what those two have. A lot. So hopefully this will help Nintendo improve their online for their next system, the next console, which... When is it coming out? I don't I just say March 2024 at the earliest to maybe March 2025 is my guess. We'll see. That's seven, eight years after the launch of the Switch, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, another thing, Nintendo is going to fix Joy-Con drift in EEA, or the European Economic Area, which is basically the European Union, I think, one or two other countries. Uh, UK and Switzerland, even if the warranty has expired. So if you have a Joy-Con and you get drift from it, uh -huh. It will be replaced, fixed, covered under warranty, even though the warranty has, well, run out. Which is nice that this is a thing that they are doing. This also includes the Switch Lite, by the way, which just had the Joy-Cons built into it. So yeah, until further notice, Nintendo will not charge you in the European Economic Area, UK, and Switzerland for the repair of the Responsive Syndrome, irrespective of whether this is caused by a defect or by wear and tear. Uh, Nintendo takes pride in creating high-quality and durable products and is continuously making improvements to them. Therefore, and until further notice, Nintendo offers to consumers who purchase their respective product in the EEA, UK, and Switzerland that repairs responsiveness syndrome relating to Control 6 will be conducted at no charge by official Nintendo repair centers. That is a good thing. So if you're dealing with sick drift, you can now get it repaired for free. Uh, as long as you live in the European Economic Area, UK, and Switzerland. Uh, and one last bit of news. Um, it appears we're finally getting somewhat cheaper expansion cards for the Xbox Series X and S consoles. So yeah, if you don't know, uh, on the Series X and S consoles, to expand the amount of storage, they were expansion cards, I believe, which are basically just specific proprietary expansion cards, like SSDs, just, you know, that you would buy. But they were way overpriced compared to buying an SSD standard for like, your computer. Well, Sony went with the way of you just buy a standard um, SSD, you open up the PS5, like the... I forget exactly what you You open up the side panel or something, and then you you can insert it in there somehow, and then you close the panel back up. Um, so two different methods. I mean, I think Microsoft's method is probably the e obviously the easiest of the methods. The biggest issue is, is way, way, way overpriced. If they were, say, 10 to 20% more expensive than a standard SSD, that would be great. But they're, like, double the price of a standard SSD for what you get. So it looks like we're getting a cheaper one is coming out. Um, so, um, so yeah, um, the expansion cards for the Series X and S have been more expensive than standard SSDs. Uh, the Seagate 1TB model was $220. 
You can now buy a, what, a one terabyte SSD for 100 bucks, 80 bucks at this point, maybe even a little bit less if you're on sale. Uh, the 500 gig was 140 bucks, and the two terabyte card was $400. That's way too much. It's way too much. As I said, if it was like 10 to 20% more on a certain SSD, fine. That's fine, but like, they're double, if not more. Uh, but yeah, now it appears the cheaper ex expansion cards are on the way. As a listing on Best Buy, which has since been pulled, but uh, was reported by The Verge, uh, Western Digital, a one terabyte card for 180 bucks, which is $40 cheaper than this ter one terabyte Seagate card. So it's, a, it's an improvement. It's still like way more than it should be. If it's like 120 bucks, it's probably what I'm thinking would be a, a reasonable price. But it's, it's a step in the right direction. Still overpriced, but a step in the right direction. As I did note, just by the cheaper price, it's still way more expensive than a standard one terabyte, which are often found for about 100 bucks. As I did a quick look on like Newegg, Amazon, and some other stores that sold SSDs, like, how much is a one terabyte SSD? Like a decent one. Oh, yeah, 80 bucks was the standard price. I saw even, you know, somewhere like $99 or whatever. So it's a good start, but they still need to come down more for sure. So, anyways, that is going to do it for today's game news roundup. Again, if you enjoy these videos, Hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and again, if you want to watch these live, twitch.tv slash trunkswd, where I go for the gaming news, and I play whatever random games I feel like playing, and of late, it has been God of War 2018 on the PC, which I've been loving so far. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you all next time.